Welcome to the Halftime Show, your road to sports in half the time. I'm Colton Tobias. And I'm Kiara Fry. And we thank you for joining us for another edition of the Halftime Show for episode number three. And as always, we have a lot to discuss on today's episode. And we are going to discuss football as the Steelers finally got their first win of the season on Monday Night Football. 27-3 against AFC North rival, the Cincinnati Bengals. Um, now, Kiara, um, I want to get a, your uh, first thoughts on the game. I happened to be at the game. Mm -hmm. It was a, a fun game to be at. It was a great game. Um, so uh, w what are uh, your thoughts on the game so far? I think it was a much-needed win for the Steelers. You cannot go 0-4. That's just not the way you want to start the season. And I think it made the win even a little bit sweeter that it happened against an AFC rival. So that kind of maybe will get them going and the season will go a little bit better. But overall, I think the biggest difference was the offense. I think Mason Rudolph did a much better job of taking control of the offense and playing like a starting quarterback. Yeah, that's right. Mason Rudolph had uh, Mason Rudolph was 24 to 28 on on the night, and he passed for over 229 mm -hmm. yards and two touchdowns. <laughs> yeah, you know, I I, I do want to touch on Mason Ru Rudolph real quick. Um, he had some really good throws, I believe. Mm -hmm. Um, um, in the game, um, he. I, I, I think he struggled a, a, a little bit against San Francisco, but I think he was able to pick yeah. up the slack. Even though I, don't, I think it was necessarily, I mean, a, a lot of people really didn't have high expectations for the Bengals coming into this season. So, I mean, I think the Steelers did play good, but at the same time, I think it was kind of like the Bengals imploded. And also, um, you, you touched on the offense. Also, that, that defense played phenomenal yes. as well, getting eight sacks. Um, I believe Devin Bush had his first sack. Uh, Cameron Hayward had his first mm -hmm. sack. There was also a, a fumble by Andy Dal Dalton, which was mm -hmm. which was a, a huge play uh, for the Steelers. And also, the Bengals didn't even score a touchdown, just one field goal nope. in the first half. Now, um, do you think um, the uh, defense lived up to expectations on Monday night here? Because I, I believe they didn't. Yeah, I think the defense did really well. They did a good job of stopping the Bengals better than they have done with the defense in previous games. And I think that also contributed to the win because the offense is seeing the defense do their part and stop the Bengals from progressing. And I think that kind of lit a fire under them. And they were like, okay, we have to carry our own weight. We have to produce as well. And I think that led a lot to the uh, stronger offense that we saw versus the Bengals as opposed to other teams. Yeah, I think it was also the uh, the uh, D line as well. I mean, I I, I mean, I, I I think that D line stepped up really big mm -hmm. as well. And um, I also want to touch on the offense and the um and uh the mm -hmm. the unknown receiver that I think could yes. be a could be a familiar face with the Pittsburgh Steelers, which is Deontay Johnson, who had that really nice touchdown pass. He was yeah. literally wide open. Nobody was around him. I mean, I mean, I knew when Rudolph threw, threw the ball to him, I knew that was going to be a, a touchdown. Um, um, do you think that um, Deontay Johnson can be a, a, a key factor for this offense this season because Juju can't do it all by himself? Yeah, I think that's a good point. Juju cannot do it all by himself. And the other thing that's interesting to see Mason Rudolph in the quarterback position versus Ben Roethlisberger is that he's kind of connecting more with a lot of the newer players as well, being new to starting himself. And I think that him and Deontay Johnson, you can kind of just see them click. And I think that that's why Deontay Johnson is really producing right now, because him and Mason Rudolph kind of have a connection like you saw Ben Roethlisberger have with AB, who's no longer with us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, you know that is one thing I love about Mason Rudolph. You know, like once he connects with a um, receiver, I think mm -hmm. it is unstoppable. Now, um, the Steelers do have, I think, also another must-win coming up this Sunday against the Baltimore Ravens because if the Steelers yes. do win, they will be tied for second place in the AFC North, and also not to mention first in the AFC North, depending on what. Cleveland Browns do, but mm -hmm. um, we, we are going to have to leave things there as we are going to have to go to our first commercial break. Coming up, we have another man on the street for you. Don't go away. Right, go. go to our new website, uview.pointpark.edu. Go, 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 go. <laughs> Join UView and find your herd. Be like, Join EOP. <laughs> and three, two. Oh, Join EOP. We're having them now, we're all like, 
Join on point with politics. Three, two, one. Join Pioneer Sideline. Loneliest number that you ever do. Welcome back. Last Monday, the Campus Activities Board hosted a Steel City celebration at Village Park. I was able to do another man on the street asking students why they love living in the Steel City. Take a look. As you may know, Point Park is located at the center of downtown Pittsburgh. It is one of the great perks about going to school here, and it makes Point Park stand out compared to other schools in the area. Now, because we are located in the heart of downtown Pittsburgh, the Campus Activities Board decided to throw a Steel City celebration here at Village Park with food and giveaways. I was able to go around asking students about what their favorite part is about living in Pittsburgh and what is their favorite Pittsburgh sports team. What is your favorite part about living in Pittsburgh? Well, honestly, uh, my favorite thing about living in Pittsburgh is, you know, it's just so many great things you could do downtown, you know, whether it's um, going to get food to eat or so many great activities you can do for free. But what I love mostly about Pittsburgh, PA is the university I go to at Point Park University. I love the people and especially the diversity. Um, there aren't that many. Uh, it's not very diverse in Wisconsin because we're um, Irish and German. Uh, just being close to all the venues, concerts, sports venues all around the city. Everything to do here. I'm a big performing arts person, so I love going to all the different theaters down here. So just seeing all the shows. Obviously, I grew around cornfield, grew up around cornfields my entire life. So the fact that I can see skyscrapers around me all the way I go, everywhere I go, there's people everywhere wearing suits and stuff. It's just surreal. It's just something I've never been able to experience in my life. Top notch. It's awesome. I love it. Just everyone's, everyone here is awesome, you know, everyone's really friendly. Um, but yeah, like, like, it's a great place to be, beautiful scenery, and there's, it's very unique, because like, you know, not many um, cities have like three rivers like intersecting. It's, it's really cool to see, you know what I mean? So, yeah, it's, it, I think like Pittsburgh's like a really cool place to be. My favorite part of living in Pittsburgh is like the, the city in general, because the people is very kind here and I don't have like troubles with people because I'm like foreign or something. Now do you have a favorite Pittsburgh sports team or do you cheer for them all? Um, I cheer for all of them honestly um, I'd have to go with um, the Pittsburgh Penguins. I like the Pittsburgh Penguins. Yeah I cheer for the Penguins and Pirates but Penguins are my primary favorite team. Uh, Pittsburgh Penguins I'm a huge hockey fan. I was actually a Steelers fan growing up. I cheer for them all, but um, I'd have to say, like, probably the Pirates. Yeah, actually, I like the Pirates. Um, I'm a very f uh, baseball fan. So, Colton, we got to hear what other people responded to you about what they love about Pittsburgh and their Pittsburgh sports teams, but what do you love about Pittsburgh? Well, Kira, I think the thing I love the most about Pittsburgh is just being so close to everything. I mean, mm. I, I, I mean, I, I go to go to a lot of sporting events, and I just love how it is just so close to Heinz Field, PNC Park, mm. and PBG Paints Arena, and also not to mention like um, places like Market Square and also the Point. I mean, I think the Point's probably one of my favorite things. I just love just to go down there to relax, to debrief, and that is just something that I love. And also, um, I love all the sports teams in our city, but I think. I have to go with the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, um, Kiara, uh, um, um, what is um, what about you? Uh, what um, what do you love the most about living in Pittsburgh? Real quick. Honestly, the same. Just being so close to so many things and having so many opportunities. And as far as sports team, I have to go with the Steelers as well. <laughs> yep, yep. Already now, uh, we have to go to another break. Coming up, we have some NBA talk. Don't go away. Thank <laughs> you. 
Um. All right, we're ready. Oh, no, 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 no. You are right here. Is, is the wind really necessary, guys? We need the wind. OK. Uh, 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 you go take uh, off of you. That's awful. <laughs> I need someone to make me laugh. Where's Wyatt? Wyatt's always late, like, duh. I'm here. <laughs> Jealous? Get out of my way. Stop. Cool. Okay. And now. <laughs> Sideline. We cover the real sports. On another season, the Penguins are just getting started with the regular season this week. Pioneer Sideline! The show that starts your Friday mornings has returned with both familiar and new faces. Daybreak hosts Taylor Fife and Delaney Bomas are bringing you the latest updates in Pittsburgh and Point Park news. We also have a variety of talent on our free segments. Whether it be singing, dancing, or indeed egg smashing. Start your mornings with us at Daybreak on UView at UView Television. Welcome back. Now here, here at the uh, halftime show, we have discussed um, three major sports so far with football, hockey, and baseball. But one other sport that we haven't gotten into yet is basketball as the NBA season is upon us. Yeah. Now Kiara, this was a um, big off season for the NBA with so many notable players going to different teams and also new and also players coming back to their original teams. Now Kiara, I wanna get your opinion what was um, um what team do you think made the biggest splash in free agency? Definitely the New York Knicks. I mean, you cannot ignore the Knicks. <laughs> oh, the Nets. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, the New York Nets. Uh, you can't ignore the fact that they got Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. Even though KD isn't going to be playing this season, in the long run, it's still a big move that happened in this off season. Yeah, I, I am really interested on what the Nets are going to be doing this season, even though. I necessarily don't think you could say championship yet because I no. just think it's because we saw it in Cleveland. I mean, Kyrie Irving, I, Kyrie Irving, I think, played his best basketball when he was on the Cavaliers because mm. I always think he had a player by the name of LeBron James. Yeah. With him. <laughs> yeah, that, uh, that name I think sounds familiar. Now, now we saw what he did with Boston when he, when he left Cleveland because he kind of necessarily didn't want to be the baby brother anymore mm -hmm. to LeBron James like he was viewed in Cleveland. Now, Abe really didn't go out his way um, um, in with his, I believe, his two years with Boston. Mm -hmm. Now, I think um, the move will be good for him, but I think he needs KD to to um, to maybe potentially run for the uh, NBA championship. Do you agree? I would agree. I think that Kyrie Irving can bring a lot to this team, but not enough to put them in a position to win the championship, especially with the other teams that they have that they would be competing against in the East. I just don't think there's enough talent there without KD. But once I once KD is back, I think that they have the potential to go all the way. Yeah, yeah. Now you know, I, I think sticking with the um, East. Now I think that the two teams that come to mind that I think will go far will be the Milwaukee Bucks and the Philadelphia 76ers. Now, the Bucks re-signed Brook Lopez. I think, I, I think that's a good move for him. I think he was very underrated. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Giannis, the reigning MVP, yes. is going to be coming back. And also um, with um, and, and also with um, Philadelphia, I mean, the only person that they really lost was Jimmy Butler to mm -hmm. Miami. Now, um, Ben Simmons is going to be coming back. Joel mm -hmm. Embiid will be there, obviously. I do think the Sixers do have what it takes to go far this year, even though Will they choke in the second round again? Who knows? <laughs> but but I, but for me, I think the biggest team that made the biggest splash in free agency, I have to go with the Los Angeles Clippers, signing okay. Kawhi Leonard from the Toronto yeah. Raptors and Paul George from the Oklahoma City Thunder. Now, the Golden State Warriors have been the defending um, Western Conference champions for the past four years in a row. <laughs> now, I do think that 
the Clippers do have what it takes to um, dethrone the Warriors, I hope. And also, um, I don't think you can count out the Los Angeles Lakers either. Me either. That's what I was going to say. I think that this is a year that enough teams in the West have the potential to really give the Golden State Warriors some competition. And we might not see the Warriors go to the championships this year. I think having AD and LeBron and Cousins all on the Lakers, they have a great group of talent there, and they could be a real competitor this year. And they also shut out the noise which with them getting rid of of Magic Johnson. I think they maybe added a little extra pressure. And also mm -hmm. not to mention Luke Walton um, departed as head coach and Frank Vogel will step in as head coach of the Lakers. Now, I I'm just a little optimistic about the Lakers. I think if they all can stay healthy, yes, mm -hmm. I, I, I do think that they can um, give I think they can give the Warriors and even the Clippers, for that matter, a run for their money. Now, uh, other Western Conference teams that come to mind, I guess you have the uh, Portland Trailblazers who, who went to the Western Conference mm -hmm. Finals last year. They're still going to have Damian Lillard, even though they really don't have anyone else either. I'm, I'm not sure if you have opinion on the Blazers at all or... Not really with the Blazers, but for the West, another team that comes to mind for me is the Pelicans. On the other side of the AD trade, they did get Zion, and they're young, but they have potential too. Yeah, so do I. Um, I do think the Pelicans can um, maybe make some noise in the Western Conference, but that will do. But but that will do it for the halftime show for this edition. My name is Colton Tobias, and I'm Kara Fry, and we thank you for joining us, and we hope to see you right back here next week. Have a great night, everybody.